Hey everyone, it's the Arshan. Welcome to a special edition of the McBride Attorneys Law Show uh, here on YouTube. We are going to be talking about what do you do when you terminate an employee. Now, I'm a lawyer, so quickly, disclaimer, I cannot give you legal advice for your specific situation. So everything we're talking about here is very general. These are basic principles, ideas you'll want to take into account. You want to consult with your lawyer to implement a specific strategy that works under your state law, the nuances that are going on in your situation, etc. I'm going to talk generally high level, some things you should think about when terminating that employee, general state of the law. Um, in, and I'm talking very broadly here because I'm not going into any specific state. I'm only licensed in 12 states in D.C., so I'm not licensed everywhere. Uh, but I really want to talk about some of the legal considerations you want to take into account uh, when terminating an employee. So uh, the first thing is, you know, obviously, if you're watching this video or if you're thinking about this, you are thinking about terminating an employee. Now, a lot of the stuff that makes this easier comes before the fact. So uh, going forward, after you get through this, you'll want to get your files in order, right? You want the right employment agreements, the right contracts, the right um, terminology, the right uh, employee handbooks. You want to set everything up so that you make it very easy to terminate employees. Um, when the situation arises, right? We don't want to be in the business of terminating employees, but it is going to happen from time to time in a business. So if we have contracts, employment manuals, everything sets clear expectations, clear rules, uh, we go from there. So you're in a situation now, though, you need to get rid of somebody. What do you do? First thing you do is pull the contract out, right? So if there is a contract or agreement, let's go there. Uh, very uh, less common with employees to have an actual contract. A lot of times what happens is employees brought on at will here in the United States, which means the employee can be terminated at any time or the employee can leave at any time. In some situations, you'll have an actual contract. Beyond that, if it's an independent contractor, you'll often have an independent contractor agreement. We're really talking about employees here, but a lot of the same principles will apply to independent contractors. Uh, there's also a lot of people who've signed independent contractors who are also employees. So a lot of the employee laws and rules will still apply because just because you sign an independent contractor agreement doesn't mean that they're an employee. Okay, so get the contract out, look at it, see what it says about termination. You know, makes what payments, what notices are uh, there, what events lead to termination. You're going to have to comply with your contract if applicable. Now, if you're like most employers, you won't have an actual contract if it's a true employee. You'll potentially have some agreements they signed, uh, statements that they've agreed to, policies and procedures. So uh, those policies and procedures may have your grounds for termination in there, in which case you bolstered your case because the expectation was set clearly in advance. The rules are there. And as long as those rules are being applied fairly across all the employees, you're managing some of your risk. Uh, if those employees are uh, if those rules are there and they're not applied evenly across all your employees, now we're back into a risk situation. So we really want to assess this, where we are, what does it mean, uh, what does it do? So take in terms of that, get the contract out, get your policies out. Do we have a solid ground? What we're looking for here is to document uh, the fact that we can terminate the employee, right? That they can leave the organization and that we didn't do it really for a discriminatory reason. That's usually our big concern here in the U.S. is to make sure that we treat everybody fairly. You can fire somebody for basically any reason, but you can't do it for a protected reason. And those protections are going to vary from federal, state to local. Uh, things like religion, national origin, uh, age, gender, these are protected characteristics. These are the reasons why you can't terminate people for those reasons. You can terminate them for things unrelated to those reasons. You want to build a good file there. So uh, we're looking to make sure that we're documenting that we're not terminating people for one of these reasons because those can give grounds to employment claims. From there, we want to make sure that we handle the termination process well. Depending on the sensitivity and the nature of what's happening, uh, you want to protect your company property. That's you know, the actual physical assets the employee has, plus any know-how they might have, customer list, et cetera. So in some cases, you're going to want to cut off access to those items before you actually terminate the employees. Uh, regardless, you need to come up with a plan. Okay, when am I going to communicate with them? How's this physically going to happen? And what are we going to do with all the data, information, et cetera, that they have? You're going to have to assess the situation for the level of cooperativeness, how people are working together, how things are going. And based on that, that determines your path to action. So think through that, build to that, and then act accordingly. 
Now, get that out there with the employee. Um, figure out how you're going to physically terminate them, whether it's going to be email, phone call, in-person meeting, and how you're going to secure your information. At these meetings, generally speaking, less is more. So it's going to be a communication from the employer side of, you know, we are terminating you, uh, perhaps because you violated this clause, you did that, um, you didn't do this, or maybe we just had a decrease in demand for our services. Whatever it is, you're going to very simple, maybe one or two sentences of why you're terminating the place, and you don't want a back and forth discussion. Uh, you may want somebody to go there to supervise the discussion to show that it was what you said it was, set a script beforehand, do the termination process, and then don't look back. From that point, I have the employee leave their facility or disconnect them from the network and move forward. So I hope these are some helpful tips on processing the termination process, right? You want to make it very clean, very succinct, and very straightforward. Don't need to get into a lot of back and forth and discussion with the employee. And you want to make sure you have your documentation in place on why you did it. Put that in your file just in case there's a lawsuit later. Those things will help protect uh, you. You want those contemporaneous records that you're keeping as part of your business uh, so that in the event of litigation, you're able to refer to them and show that they are indeed business records, which means make sure you have a policy and procedure for how you keep the termination records and follow those all the time so that you'll have business records, which will help you in the event of litigation. Business records is a very special meaning uh, in litigation. You want to make sure you're keeping business records of what's happening, which means follow a policy and procedure and be consistent about it. Okay, I hope that's helpful. If you have questions, drop your comments below on the McBride Attorneys Law Show on YouTube. You'll find this, you'll find this video there on that channel. Um, comment, let us know what you're thinking, what challenges you have. Don't put any attorney-client information in there, but talk very generally, maybe some experiences you've had, things that you're uh, questioning. We'll try to do more videos to help you. And of course, uh, in that connection, make sure you are subscribed to the McBride Attorneys Law Show over at YouTube and ring the bell to get notifications so that you'll see when we post additional updates. If you have specific questions or issues, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm not soliciting your work as an attorney, but I would love to know uh, generally what's going on in the marketplace, what issues are out there for employers, so that we can tailor content to you. And of course, if you have a specific legal issue, as we discussed in the beginning, don't rely on this for advice. Consult the attorney of your choosing and work with them on working to an issue. So, folks, thanks for joining me. I'm the Arshan. So looking forward to seeing you on addition, uh, future editions of the McBride Attorneys Law Show. I will talk with you again very soon.